So if today wasn't a free money day, I don't know what was. And as you can see here on the screen, guys, CP uh, PPI came out and yeah, it came in bullish for the bulls and they did what they do best. They ran it up. They ran it all the way to nearly a 50 day moving average as we covered in the weekend deep dive in these levels. It was a fantastic Oracle uh, video for that. And I highly recommend you guys watch it. Link down in the description below for that. However, as you can see on the screen here, we have the 50 day moving average within striking distance of the market. And subsequently, the NASDAQ as well within striking distance of that gap fill, completing the gap fill and also continuing continuing higher. This is what I said. If PPI came in better than expected, we most likely were going to see a rally in the market as a whole. And that's what we got, right? The number came in 2.4 versus 2.7 expected, 2.3 versus 2.2 expected. And that really sets up to the possibility that the market is going to continue rallying into the subsequent CPI report. More importantly, that CPI report is coming out at 8.30 today. So it would already have come out when I post this video. So you guys would have already seen the market reaction to that subsequent report. Now, here's the game theories of what it could have come in at, right? The main thing they're gonna be looking at is, does core tick down? If core ticks down, it basically green lights this idea in the market's head that federal rate cuts are on the horizon. We also had a Fed member speaking last night, uh, Bostic saying, I'm willing to wait for the first rate cut, but it's 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 coming, right? It, it's like when your parents told you, hey, uh, we're, you'll get a treat, but you gotta wait a little bit. So the question is, is it going to be in the next meeting? Is it going to be in November? Is it going to be in December? That is the question we're trying to answer today and subsequently what it means for your portfolio, right? It's going to be a jam, a pack one, and also want to share some special news, right? So the God himself, uh, Warren Buffett's portfolio, uh, actually not his portfolio, but Berkshire Hathaway is one of the new companies that's going to be joining the $1 trillion club. Yes. Berkshire Hathaway is going to probably cross the 1 trillion mark this year, which is going to be a record for them, right? It's going to be one of the few companies that's actually crossed that trillion dollar threshold. And it's not going to be a tech company, right? So that's the really, really cool thing is that it's not going to be a tech company. It's going to be Buffett, right? So it's absolutely crazy, right? Just wanted to share that with you guys. But Bostic saying a bunch of stuff, right? Housing inflation has come down in important way the last couple of months. Personally, I think you're full of crap because the housing inflation has actually come down. It has been a stubborn, stubborn, stubborn thing. It's come down basically 0.2, right? However, it is not what my opinion or your opinion that matters. It matters what the market thinks. And the market only thinks one thing, rally, rally, rally. We have got back into this mentality of buy, 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 buy. And as Jim Kramer would say, buy, buy, buy. So we're gonna be going over some of the things we need to pay attention to going into the CPI report. Where are we opening? Where are we closing? What we're doing? And also you guys can get the post game recap tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be doing a live stream. Hopefully, Fatal will be on tonight. Uh, he actually had some personal stuff he had to take care of. So again, hopefully, we will be live streaming tonight. Uh, futures looking a little bit wishy-washy at the time of recording this video, but I do want to, I do want to point something out to all those Bitcoin lovers out there. But before we do that, guys, if you wouldn't mind, YouTube has put us in what I call YouTube jail. Uh, hit the like button down below, subscribe, and have bell notifications on. It helps the channel out tremendously, and we love to see your comments, most of all, down in the comment section. So make sure you guys throw it down there what you think. So Bitcoin, for all those that love, 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 love to hold Bitcoin, right? I, I love you guys. But again, this is where... Is the CPI report going to propel Bitcoin above 63,000, right? This is where you guys, you, the viewer, need to step up, right? If you're bullish on Bitcoin, and this is where the bulls have to come in and basically clutch it for Bitcoin. If they do not clutch it for Bitcoin, then yeah, the it's coming back down to 55,000, and it's not going to continue rallying the markets. It's not going to be that risk on mentality. And also speaking of risk, right? Uh, VIX coming back below that $20 threshold and subsequently trending down. This is one of the keys that you guys are going to have to watch in the next subsequent days, which is going to be 
does this thing trickle back down to 13, 15, 14 dollars? If that happens, then new all time highs on the market are very easy. The bullish run in the tech sector that we're seeing is very easy to happen. And that means everything is calm, collected, and we should not be worried, right? This will indicate that the market is stable, that the market is pricing in things correctly and that everything is calm collected and how that cpi report is going to shake everything out we're going to have to see right there is a very real possibility that this cpi report has come in horribly wrong and therefore vix at the time of when i'm this video is live could be 20 30 dollars right now who knows, right? You guys are going to be seeing it, obviously, hindsight 2020. And I would also like to cover the Nikkei in just a second, right? Uh, Nikkei has been erasing all the losses it recently had. Actually, from the bottom, if you bought the Nikkei at the bottom, you're up nearly 20% in a couple of days. Massive clap to you if you did that. We also have China still actually being in an interesting area it's actually consolidating around the 200 so interesting buy right everything's developing to everyone was a little scared at some point but going in we're actually looking bullish right the russell is looking like so 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 so, so close that it's about to cross that 50-day moving average as we can see here it's literally three cents away right didn't close above it got back above it but did not close there that could be options plays that could be market makers just not wanting to pay certain options out. So I don't necessarily dismiss that out of hand. The Russell is going to be the thing you guys need to pay attention to today. That is going to be your most optimal trade for the market because Russell is going to run it. It has not filled its gap fill. Similarly, S&P, right? If we look at S&P's chart, I said anything above 537.45, you close, open below it, push back above it. That's when you should have been bullish. I didn't have the opportunity to take that trade just because I was looking at our trades in the market, right? So I just didn't want to deploy as much capital. And NASDAQ filling that gap beautifully, opening a 455.63 on the dot and just blowing up, right? Now, the question is, is 475.55 going to come into play tomorrow? Is 554.87 going to come into play tomorrow with I say tomorrow, but it's really today, right? So is today going to, those numbers going to come into play and subsequently result in a broader market rally that's going to essentially be, I would believe, a 10 to 15% rally from the bottom, right? That'll be 10% to all-time highs. So congratulations if you've been catching this from the bottom. It has been a fantastic ride for you guys. Now let's quickly run through some of the bigger cap stocks, right? Apple, I said, hey, two day close above the moving average. Congratulations, this is bullish. Apple's keep going and actually fill the gap. So if we get the momentum from CPI, Apple's definitely gonna be one of the leaders of the pack. We also got Microsoft. I said it was looking a little wishy-washy around that 200 day. However, it is showing strength around here. Google, after even having that antitrust lawsuit filed against them and the US government looking to break them up a little bit, Google's like, I'm pounding away. I'm being strong. I'm going to continue going up. We got Meta that I said was in a chop fest, looking like it's actually going to continue higher. And also the King, NVIDIA, SHC mentioned in the video, don't short this thing. And yeah, NVIDIA is just chopping, chopping up to everybody, killing all the bears out there, broken down in a downtrend, trend reversal. So bullish on NVIDIA all the way currently until this reverses, right? I've always said, we got to be careful around that 50-day moving average for NVIDIA. But again, this is going to be one of those that you need to watch. Intel actually having a bullish day. And I will admit when I am wrong, and Ghost, you are completely right uh, about Intel, I do believe. But I just want to see a little more consolidation in this area, right? Uh, subsequently, we have pushes like they, and then they get sold off. I want to see a little bit higher push, and maybe I'll jump in on those leaps with you on Intel. Wouldn't necessarily be a horrible idea, right? Just speculative ideas. And also we have a Discord where we interact with all these viewers that I'm mentioning in this video. They, they threw these ideas at me and I'm sharing it with you guys. So link down the description below for the Discord link as well. And another one that we talked about a while on the channel, Nike Longs, right? Ghost was talking about Longs in the Discord around this area and looking like they're paying off now. So I'm sure you'll comment on Rumble about that. And also mostly RSP pushing up higher, which indicated a broader market rally. So this is not just isolated to those set Magnificent 7. It is a broader market rally. So 
Recapping for you guys, we need to close above key levels, which right now is on the S&P is going to be the 50-day moving average. NASDAQ is going to be a similar story, but it's actually going to really what a CPI day is going to be the 50-day moving average thing at 472.54. S&P was 543.74. The IWM, I really want to see this gap fill. Any close between 211 and 215 would be very, very good. I've seen Russell do 3% days on these CPI days, so it's not out of the ordinary. We want to see broader tech rallying in the future. And also, we do not want to see retracement of any sort. Any retracement of any sort puts the bear thesis back on the table, and we need to stay bull thesis uh, all the way until that happens, right? If it happens, when it happens, most likely, again, I talk about it on the channel, the inversion of the yield curve, which basically means once this thing actually pops down below that white line, bad things are going to happen. But until then, we're not going to talk about it. We're going to keep you guys updated. As always, make sure you follow us on Twitter as well so that you can get all the updates of this along with anything we do. So I hope to see you guys today at the 7 p.m. Eastern live stream. And thank you all so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one and have a wonderful day and hope you are green today.